Welcome to the Brew Crew Review Podcast, the show by fans for fans of your Milwaukee Brew. All right, Brew fans, welcome to the Brew Crew Review Podcast. Uh, joining you today is my, uh, yours truly, Craig and Vince from Houston. How's it going? <laughs> I'm doing great, Craig. How are you? And I might live in Houston, but I'm always going to be from Wisconsin. Oh, of course. You're live from Houston, our podcast. I am, yeah. I'm coming in live from Houston, but I am going to say um, just now, because I know that we're going to probably get at least another two episodes up before then, but um, I'll point out now that any Brewers fans that are coming to Houston for the Brewers uh, Astro Series coming up in mid-May, um, please feel free to reach out to us on social media. Um, this will be, you know, Brewers Capital Central here. Uh, happy to throw a tailgate party at the house. Uh, or to meet up with any of our fans. So, um, anyway. Awesome. Yeah, that's May, Friday, May 17th through Sunday, May 19th. The Brewers will be in Houston. That'll be exciting. And yeah. at this point, like the Brewers will most likely have a better record than the Astros. They're about seven games ahead of them in the standings, I think. So, yep. uh, not to rub that in. Uh, but And there's still plenty of time, obviously. But, yeah, no, I mean um, – yeah, so the Brewers' start to the season has been pretty pretty phenomenal getting out of the gates. They currently are in first place and then all central as we're approaching the turn of the first calendar of the season here. Um, yeah, so, I mean, how are they doing it? It's with offense, which is something that the Brewers have not been that great at in most of their contending years in the last five or six seasons. They've they've been relied on their pitching. This time they're they're – I think they're still leading the major leagues in runs per game at over six runs per game, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, that obviously won't continue. They've they're they've been having a very high average with the runners in scoring position. So the pitching will have to continue to be good and step up. Our bullpen's been surprisingly great, even without Devin Williams. Our rotation's been more than serviceable. However, injuries are starting to pop up left or right. On that front, uh, I don't know if you want to recap a couple of the injuries that the Brewers are dealing with in the rotation. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it's been like one thing after another. I know that we've had two starting pitchers go on the disabled list uh, in the last two days, DL Hall, um, who has, you know, not looked necessarily uh, the best results wise in his first three starts as a Brewer, but you know, he's got, he's got a dip in velocity, but maybe that's been caused by an injury and that's what the Brewers seem to think. So they put him on the disabled list. And then just yesterday, we found out that Wade Miley is going on the disabled list as well. He had been hit, um, I think it was in his kneecap, uh, by a line drive back through the, the uh, near the pitcher's mound during his last start and uh, against San Diego and Milwaukee. And, and now that's caused him to go on the disabled list as well. Um, so we've unfortunately been, you know, bitten by the injury bug. And even as a weird freak injury yesterday during batting practice, Jacob Eunice, who was already on the disabled list, was shaking fly balls in the outfield at PNC Park in Pittsburgh and actually got struck in the in the face or the neck by a ball and uh, had to be taken off the field um, in an ambulance as a precautionary measure. So it just seems like one thing after another with the Brewers' injuries this year. Christian Yelich is obviously – uh, still on the disabled list, and you know that's not even talking about guys who have been injured since the start of the year. Guys like Devin Williams, Brandon Woodruff, of course, and um, and Robert Gasser, who has yet to throw a pitch at the big league level, um, but who was being considered certainly is being considered for a spot in our rotation, but is now just starting his uh, his rehab in the minor leagues and has yet to throw for Milwaukee this year. So um, certainly, lots of injuries are piling up right now for Milwaukee. Yeah, and obviously Frey Peralta has been great at, as our number one starter. He's always stepped up. And even Colin Ray has been more than just solid. He's been phenomenal so far. Uh, as you pointed out in our pre-production meeting, Vince, that his numbers are even like better than Corbin Burns for the most part this year uh, through, again, small sample size. But still, when you're getting that production from Colin Ray that you gave up, you know, that's pretty good. But overall, like I, I, like I said, I think the Brewers have a decent amount of depth in the starting rotation coming in the year. However, uh, that's being tested big time right now. Um, in fact, we were just saying in our pre-production meeting too that uh, we're not the Brewers. This is Tuesday um, against the Pirates here, um, and the the Brewers do not even have not named a starter yet for tonight's game. Um, so again, they're kind of scrambling. We're probably gonna have to have some bullpen games or whatnot, but I mean, 
Tuesday, April 23rd, and they still don't know who's starting tonight because of the dearth of injury. So hopefully we can weather this. I know there's a big series coming up this weekend at AmFam Field against the, the vaunted New York Yankees. Every time the Yankees come to yep. Miller Park, I think of uh, of you and Chad Vince for some reason. I think it probably sends <laughs> back to our 2005 uh little venture into the Yankees uh, locker room back then in the day, back in the day when we had. Yeah. yeah, I know. I, I still regret not shaking Joe Torrey's hand when he extended it. It was a very embarrassing moment in my journalist uh, journalism career. But um, yeah, I, I know Chad's interview with the Ducky Matt too. He was voted one of the best in Bruker review history. So um, yeah, ab- absolutely great memories. And speaking of Ducky Matt, so he was in the news even this week. Uh, Shohei Tani uh, broke his record uh most home runs by a Japanese born player. So that was kind of interesting. So yeah, obviously a couple of all time great Japanese players. Um and yeah, uh Hideki Matsu was pretty good in his day. Uh Godzilla, I believe, was his nickname back then. Um but yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he was great. Won a world uh, championship with the Yankees in two thousand nine. Um I, you know, he's not he didn't put together a Hall of Fame career uh, in the big leagues by by any stretch, but he had a very solid career and certainly was a fun player to watch and, and kind of see his progression through uh, American baseball. I, I liked him a lot back in the day. Yeah, and then on the Brewers, I mean, obviously they need to get healthy, but uh, even some other guys I think are going to start heating up. Like Reese Hoskins hasn't gotten out of the gates that great, but I think that he's got um, – he can be kind of streaky and he could carry a club when need be in the middle of our order. order. So I think he'll get going. Um but overall, there's been a lot of like young players that have had pretty good starts this season. I think Bryce Trang is the biggest standout. He's obviously great defensively, but he's, he leads the league in stolen bases still and has been hitting over 333, I think. And, yeah, I mean, pretty phenomenal start for the year for Bryce. Uh, Sal Friedlich has been holding his own. I know that he you know, experimented playing some third base in spring training. He's actually got to play there one or two games this year already. But, um yeah, for the most part, we need him in the outfield now that we have uh, Yelich on the d- disabled list and and Mitchell also on the disabled list. So, um, but yeah, overall he's been doing great. Uh, Jackson Trio Trio has you know obviously if we, let's not forget the kid's only twenty years old, just turned twenty before the season yeah. started. He's more than holding his own. Uh, he's not been given a prime spot in the buying lineup, but a lot of times he's been penciled in the ninth hole. But I mean, I think. Murphy's handling that fairly well, not putting him in a high pressure situation, but I think the kid will be ready for it sooner than later. Yeah, he's he's been fine. Uh he's certainly looked great defensively. I think that he's um, you know, shown that he has the skill sets. I think, you know, there's gonna be an element of maturity that comes with his game uh as as he develops and continues to grow as a player. I'm not too worried about a guy who has shown such potential in the minor leagues, but has only played a handful of games at triple A going into this year. So I, I I'm looking at Jackson Churio as being a guy who the Brewers are not expecting literally anything out of this year for the most part. This is a a year that when at least the season started, it was it was kind of a strange year because you had a lot of question marks just because there are so many young guys. But you know, a good a good part of the reason for um the Brewers taking this direction this year is to see what they've got with this younger core. And I, I'm pretty excited. We're gonna see how this shakes out. Um I also have to if we're talking about, you know, guys on this team who are stepping up, I really have to give some kudos to Blake Perkins as well. Um, the guy sitting here with a 333 batting average. Uh, and and I just think he's been a standout at just about every aspect of the game, defensively, uh, offensively, on the base pass. He saved a game a couple of days ago in St. Louis by an amazing catch in center field. Uh, just a huge, huge plus from Blake Perkins this year. Absolutely. He's kind of like the Colin Ray on the offensive side. And someone we didn't have great expectations for, but is exceeding them big time. And and so that depth that the front office bill is really showing. Another kudos to the front office is their move to obtain left-handed pitcher from the Los Angeles Dodgers uh, reliever, Brian Hudson. He's been phenomenal this year. I mean, he's can pitch multiple innings out of bullpen. He usually is going to average like two strikeouts an inning and his ERA is under one. I mean, you can you can't even ask for a better start uh than a guy like him. And we have other unsung guys who step up whenever asked, like Bryce Wilson. I know he was on the team last year, but for that swingman role, like it uh, could be very valuable here as we get through injuries, is we're probably gonna have to piece together some bullpen games. Guy like Bryce Wilson being able to throw like four plus um solid innings and uh at any time in the game is pretty valuable as well so kudos to him overall again i think everything has just been falling our way uh for the brewers so far 
Pat Murphy's doing a great job. I don't think anyone's like saying, oh, wow, we're really missing Craig Council at this point at all because they haven't. No, no. And in fact, in fact, Craig, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to pretend like I didn't want Craig Council back as the Brewers manager, but I'm actually really glad that the Brewers have got Pat Murphy right now in the managerial seat. And I think he's been a breath of fresh air for this franchise in many ways. And I, I love the fact that, you know, Murphy's getting the most out of these young players. I, I don't know how Craig was able to interact with some of the other guys. So I'm not going to pretend like, you know, it was necessarily a, a critical a piece to be critical about about Craig's managerial style but I will say that I think that Pat Murphy exemplifies how a player and a manager should interact particularly younger players I think that he's got that perfect line going right now and you can see it with the results on the field and you know we're not always going to be just this hot uh, throughout the course of a long season but I do think that Pat Murphy has got this clubhouse in check he's got people's perspectives in check and I think that he's got the guys uh, maximizing their ability, which is all that you can ask for a manager outside of the in-game decisions. Um, so I, I'm very happy with Pat Murphy so far. Absolutely. And a couple other guys, just to point out, Joy Ortiz has been doing a great job whenever he's gotten himself in the game. and gotten, uh, So, again, he was a big part of the Corbin Burns trade along with D.L. Hall and the draft pick that they got. Um, the other guy I got, kind of got to give a shout-out to is Oliver Dunn. Here's another guy that we yeah. traded a couple of, you know, decently touted prospects for to obtain him from the Philadelphia Phillies. He had a great year at AAA with the Phillies organization last year, but he's 26 years old coming in this year. So it's a little bit old to be like a true prospect, so to speak. But with that being said, the Brewers saw something that I liked them. They, he's got a nice plate discipline. He hits from the left side. He's super vers- versatile, can handle many positions on the, on the infield. And I think, again, that's that old Tampa Bay Rays model that the, the Brewers have kind of adapted and it really comes in handy. And not only and we've been hitting him everywhere up and down the lineup too, including the cleanup hole, uh, pretty often. So I mean, he's held his own. And so again, just it's hard to see too many holes on this ball club when we're able to have the depth and the versatility to handle these pretty many injuries. A lot of these injuries, I can only imagine some of these injuries happening to former Brewer teams of like a decade or two ago, and it would be pretty crippling to have Chris and Yellich be out and not miss a beat or whatever. And so far the Brewers have been doing as such. Um, so yeah, uh, obviously yeah, it's a good time, a good time to be a Brewer fan. Yeah, it is. Uh, Scott's intern is handing me a note right now. It looks like of the nine Brewers uh, in the starting lineup on a regular basis, the, the nine guys uh, positionally around the diamond, five of those guys have a batting average over 300 so far this season. That's phenomenal. Blake, I think Blake we lo- Perkins, I think I think Blake the interns... sitting at 330. Yeah, Blake Perkins sitting at 333. Joey Ortiz at exactly 300. Willie Adams at 301. Bryce Terang at 314. And William Contreras uh, leading the pack at 353. And that's not counting Christian Yelich, uh, who just fell under the games needed to to be considered a starter for most of the season, and he's at 333 this year as well. Um, so when he gets back from injury, that'll be another 300 hitter in the lineup. Yeah, so unbelievable that the Brewers heading has has ticked up because in previous years, about this point of the year, we realized that almost everyone was hitting about hovering around the Mendoza line. And so to be hitting so much better, I'm not sure what has changed in the philosophy up there at the plate or the players, but um, it's obviously paying off huge. And it's and I think it's kind of masking the issues that we'll have long term with um, with our starting rotation, unfortunately. I mean, there's a lot of guys that can step up and be a good part of this rotation, but there's going to be guys that go through growing pains, and some of those are going to be necessary to have the major league level. Andy Ashby's coming back from major injury. Once he gets in the rotation, there's probably going to be some ups and downs that the Brewers will have to weather at the major league level. Same thing with Robert Gasser. Once he gets healthy and makes a major league debut, I think their goal is to get him some decent chunk of innings in his rookie year here, and there'll be some ups and downs there with him too. So, again, D.L. Hall, once he gets back to full health, I think that they're pretty committed to keeping him in the rotation long term, including this year. So as long as he's healthy, he'll probably be in there. And uh, I think he'll, you know, with experience he gains, it'll only help him uh, going forward. So, again, he'll probably take some lumps, but overall, like he'll really, you know, gain from that experience going forward in the future. So. The cool thing is that we're doing all these growing pains and everything, and we're still in first place. So that that says something about uh, how this team is being run from top to bottom in the organization. Yeah, and organizational depth, too. I mean, I, I think that there's a lot of guys who can step up, uh, as we've seen with, again, Blake Perkins, who was able to step up after two injuries in our starting outfield going into the season with Garrett Mitchell and Christian Yelich. You know, if you recall, 
um, some of our earlier podcasts and, and the discussions surrounding the team early on, earlier on in spring training, it wasn't even known if Blake Perkins was going to make the team. And, um, you know, instead of him either in triple A or being released or traded to another club, we've got him in our lineup. And again, he's hitting 333. Uh, so it, it just speaks to that depth. And that's not a cut against Garrett Mitchell or Joey Weimer. I think that we're going to see a lot of those guys this season, but um, it still is great that we've got that sort of depth that, you know, when injuries do come up, which they always will, um, you, you've got these guys that you can rely on. And, and maybe Blake Perkins is playing himself into a starting role uh, at this point, even after these guys come back from injuries. You never know. Um, but either way, I love that depth. Another thing working in the Brewers' advantage, I guess, for this season is the fact that most of the other teams in the NL Central have a lot of promising players, but they also have as many question marks and injury related things going on themselves. Obviously, the Chicago Cubs are probably team will be um, one of the teams that we're, we're concerned about fending off for the division title. Obviously, um, their ace, Justin Steele, has been out for most of this year, so they'll get him back. But overall, I don't think their offense is any better than ours in any way, shape, or form. I feel like we have a better bullpen than they do. Um, so, yeah, overall, I think that they're a team to watch throughout the season, but I, I really feel the Brewers match up well against them. The Cincinnati Reds are another team I feel like we're going to be a contender this year, and they've got a lot of young pitching, uh, but they're also dealing with injuries. Their ace, uh, Frankie Montas, just went on the uh, disabled list as well. Um, so, I mean – and then you've got the Pittsburgh Pirates who are playing this this week. And, uh, yeah, they, they are overachieving so far. But, again, their arrow is pointing up as a franchise. St. Louis Cardinals, who, again, are in last place like they finished last year, are, you know, surprisingly have that core with with uh, Goldschmidt and Arenado kind of anchoring the middle of their lineup. But outside of that, I don't think they're, they're young hitters. They're expecting to step up like Jordan Walker or even Nolan Gorman are doing as such. So they're struggling um, a little bit offensively. And they're, uh, they're outside of Sonny Gray, their they're starting pitching is probably average at best. A lot of, a lot of washed up guys like Lance Lynn at this point or even Kyle Gibson don't, don't scare me by any means. Even Miles Michaelis is not that great of a pitcher overall. So, I mean, I, I think that, that they're in for a long season. I don't really even consider them that to be contenders, actually. So, um, I don't know. The, the division still seems like it's there for the taking, and it's a long battle of the season, as we all know. And injuries will play a big part of it, but I just really feel good about this team. And the overall talent usually rises to the top, and I feel like with the Brewers' young, youth that they have a lot of talent with, with, with promising features on this team, and that's that's nothing but exciting. Yeah, way too early to, to, I think, consider this Division One or anything, but it's been a great start. Um, I like our team's uh, young core a lot. I think that our team's um, energy level is strong. I, I do think that, um, you know, the question for this team, of course, is going to be starting pitching, and, and any playoff scenario is going to start and end with that conversation, unfortunately. So, um, but, I, but I'm really excited right now for where things are at, and I'm really excited for just the general direction and the future of the franchise as well. And, uh, you know, I, I think that some of the wild cards, um, that we talked about going into the year offensively. I, I'm not going to say that they're answered, but I would say that we're getting a pretty good glimpse of what guys like South Freelich can do. Um, we're getting a good glimpse of, you know, some of the talent up and down the lineup. And I guess the question that remains for me at least is what can a guy like Aaron Ashby do when healthy over the course of a full season? I know he's back down in the minor leagues right now and he had a rough start, but um, I do think that, his talent level is such that the Brewers saw enough to reward him with a long-term contract. I would like to see what he can do in a, a stretched out way in a non-injury filled season in the rotation, Robert Gasser in the same way. So maybe we do have the talent in the starting rotation, but we don't know it yet. So I'm very excited to see what some of these guys can do um, over the course of this year. As, as guys do get back from injury, um, the rotation looks a lot different if those guys step up and are able to pitch uh, to where some of their ceilings, um, as evaluated by scouts and prognosticators uh, stands. I mean, if those guys are able to step up and then Colin Ray is your four starter or fifth starter instead of your number two starter, that's, that's a much different conversation than we're currently having right now about our starting pitching. So that's, that's really what I'd like to see develop over the next, you know, four to six weeks uh, is some of these guys stepping into the rotation and really establishing themselves as viable major league starters um, and not just as viable starters, but as very, is, is quality, high quality starters as well. And I don't know that that's going to be something that can necessarily be answered in that short duration of a time frame, but I'd really like to see these guys step up and get that opportunity and, and see what happens. Well, Ashby is an interesting case because 
prior to his injury, he was really showing signs of like a, a very a almost for sure number three starter, uh, if not even a higher ceiling of a number two starter in that range of, uh, you know, and, and you just never know coming back from injury. How, how, but I think he needs the innings at the major league level. So I think the once he gets up to speed in the minors, like the he will. The Brewers do have sights on him being part of the major league rotation, and and it's getting to the point where they, they it's not a necessity now, where they may have to force him to come up earlier than what they would have wanted. But uh, yeah, I, I think Aaron Ashby will obviously have a big role for the future of the Brewer teams, like you mentioned with his long term contract he signed, and he'll be a long time member of the rotation. I truly believe that. So, um, all right, before we wrap up today's podcast, I also wanted to go over the fact that uh, well. Kind of consider Vince here our broker view Brewers history or historian uh, buff or whatever. And uh, I know everyone are, is already aware of our listeners <laughs> working on an awesome baseball card collection where he's trying to get an autographed baseball card of every single uh, Milwaukee Brewer yeah. that's, ever, that's ever donned a uniform. So he's he was well yep. aware of how many Brewers have donned the Milwaukee uh, Brewer uniform. And as of last week, there were 999 total Brewers on the all time roster and number. 1,000 happened 1, last week, and it was, drum roll, yeah. please. As everyone would have guessed, uh, Jared Koenig uh, was number 1,000. So it was a pretty exciting day. Um, I know that we were going back and forth with our colleagues, Mike Vassallo and, uh, and Adam McKelvey, and, you know, it kind of tipped them off that we were close on this one. And uh, we, we ended up uh, seeing Jared Koenig make his big league debut, or I'm sorry, not his was it his big league debut? I'm not even sure. Uh, but anyways, he became Brewer number 1,000. Um, so, no, he had pitched – Koenig had pitched with Oakland back in 2022 for a handful of games. But, uh, yes, Jared Koenig officially was the 1,000th player to play for the Brewers in team – not franchise, but team history. So that doesn't count guys that played only and solely for the Seattle Pilots, but not the Milwaukee Brewers. But in Milwaukee now, 1,000 guys have played for the team since the 1970 season. This is the 55th year of Brewers baseball in Milwaukee. Um so it's pretty exciting, but yeah, 1000 guys. It's uh, it's kind of a, a cool, weird milestone. I don't know how many people were tracking on it going into the year. I think that um, looking here at some of the notes from the interns, but going into the season, the Brewers were sitting at, you know, 989 guys on the all-time roster. And you can kind of see this um, progress. 2023 was a big year after 2022, the Brewers had 954 guys who had played for the team. So we've jumped up. You know, that's 46 guys in two seasons, which is pretty, pretty crazy when you think about it. But, um, but yeah, so I've been tracking this since about 2017. After 2021, we were at 931. Um, after 2020, we were at 900 exactly. And after 2019, we were at 877. And that was after, um, you know, going through 50 years of Brewers history. So that's, that's, that's uh, the progression over the last five or six years. So we have been tracking it as Brewer Review for at least that long. Um, so it's been going on for quite a while. Yeah. And, and I do have to thank, and I do have to, th oh, go ahead, Craig, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. I was just going to thank our anonymous source, Tom Carter, for giving us the, the tip that, uh, that Koenig was going to be called up in Mr. 1000. So we were able to, to beat our colleagues uh, at, at pointing that out to the general public. Thank you for that inside information, TC. And uh, like always, we, we, we will promise to keep your, your identity concealed. <laughs> Uh, then just use your initials as TC. So thank you for that. Oh, yeah. I will want to say that it's pretty cool that all 1,000 Milwaukee Brewers on-field employees over the over that period of time. Uh, I I almost want, wish that they would uh, send a little thank you note along to to Bud Seelig, Bud Allen Seelig, who w without him, I truly believe there would not be Major League Baseball in Milwaukee to this day. And for all you fans who have not checked it out, it's one of my kids' favorites at AmFam Field down the left field line on the Loge level. Uh, go seek out something called the Seelig Experience. It only takes about 10 minutes um, or so, I, I believe. And so you go check that out as it tells the story of how Bud, uh, after the Braves had left Milwaukee in 1957, Bud was, uh, I'm sorry, 1967, was Bud was very instrumental in bringing uh, major league baseball back to milwaukee and it's a great great and so i really all all the brewer fans all of our listeners really owe bud selig um to the fact that milwaukee is a major league baseball franchise and will be at least through the 2050 season and beyond which is pretty awesome yeah let's hope forever um 
And yes, absolutely. We've got a thousand players in and hopefully many more thousands to come uh, in future generations. So we're, 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 we're going to be tracking it here at the Brooker Review. Uh, and you can give us a follow Brooker Review 1 on, on Twitter uh, and send any questions that you have to Scott, who uh, we don't allow on the air anymore, but you might get to him at some point. Um, you can at least send him to us. Brooker Review uh, podcast with an S at gmail.com for any questions uh, for Scotty. Awesome. All right. Well, I'll stay classy, Jared Koenig and Bud Selig, and <laughs> go Brewers. Go Brewers. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Scotty. Thanks, Chad. Thanks, Vikram. Do, 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 do.